There is a story that was told a long time ago from a galaxy far, far away about a young boy, a farmer actually, that lost everything, was knocked down and doubted himself, but found the courage to stand up to his enemies, to his father even, and rose beyond his doubts, his fears, and even his inabilities. And with the help of his friends, this young boy toppled an empire. He inspired boys and girls, men and women alike, to do what was right, no matter how hard it was. For decades, Luke Skywalker was the embodiment of hope, of good, and of bravery. That is until these three came out of nowhere, stabbed him in the back, marooned him on a windy ass island, and undid all of his work. Oh yeah, and handed all of the credit to the new kid in town. This is not going to go the way you think. Well, they did warn us. When The Last Jedi came out in 2017, fans were on the edge of their seats, waiting to see the resolution to this literal cliffhanger. Their hero had returned to the big screen after decades, and fans were excited to see what he had done and how he had evolved from a young warrior to hopefully a sage master. And bam, he threw his lightsaber away. Let's pause right here and talk about the rise of subverting expectations and how Game of Thrones has changed storytelling. You see, when Ned Stark's head was unexpectedly parted from the rest of him, the shockwaves were intense. Things did not go the way we thought they were going to go. Seeing the immense popularity of the show, it's as if writers everywhere have learned just the one particular lesson for the reason for its success, and now try to replicate wherever and whenever possible. You see, we are in the time of so much media competing for our ever-shortening attention spans. And writers are swapping out good storytelling for large blasts, giant secret fleets, nostalgia, and of course, subverting expectations. Because a surprised audience is a happy audience. But surprise does not equal good. And more importantly, surprise does not equal good storytelling. When Ryan Johnson, the director of The Last Jedi, shared the reason behind the complete destruction destruction of everything that was Luke Skywalker. Ryan said that he wanted to create something that was surprising. Well, he certainly did that. Let's look at what's happened to Luke as a result. Because he's somehow gone from this to this. Gone from someone who risked everything, even his training to help his friends, who faced up to one of the worst villains of all time, barely prepared, so underprepared in fact, that he lost his hand and almost fell off the face of the planet. Despite the intense loss, despite finding out the worst guy ever was his dad, in the next movie, we see him take on even more responsibility to protect his friends, his sister, and face his father. But somehow, this man went from being the ultimate hero to someone convinced of his own irrelevance. So much so, in fact, that he needed to go extinct. He thinks that it's arrogant to assume that only the Jedi can solve the problems plaguing the world. And it's time for the Jedi to end so the world can be at peace again. And just like that, Luke Skywalker was passing up any sense of responsibility. He cut himself off from the Force, which is basically the modern equivalent of turning off your phone, locking yourself in your room, and listening to Linkin Park all day. And it does feel like he's regressed, like instead of getting wiser, his worldview has become narrow and stale and immature. Don't get me wrong, heroes do get toppled. That's what we see happen to Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight. And maybe this is what Ryan Johnson was trying to show us, that any idealistic hero can fall, can forget their way, can suffer enough defeats that they are forever changed and broken. While that might be realistic or in some ways even surprising to see happen to Luke Skywalker, my question to you is, is it necessary? Is it worth it to destroy one of the greatest heroes of all time? do his legacy and let him fade into nothingness as a complete failure. I think this is the representation of what the new generation thinks of the old, that these older people with all this power created problems like racism and sexism and climate change, and now they're unable or more like unwilling to solve them, except for the women, I guess. Luke Skywalker has gotten the full treatment of political and social commentary that seeps into and corrupts every story these days. Hence, Rey is here to show him the light, to convince him to do the right thing again. And she inspires him into his final showdown that ends up protecting the rebellion and killing Luke. But not before he gets a couple below-the-belt shots in at his nephew. 
Geez, seriously, who is this guy? What a sad end to one of the greatest heroes. And we haven't even talked about how in the next movie, Anakin's and his victory over the dark side was completely undone, that Palpatine was resurrected so Rey could have her moment in the sun. So not only is Luke a failure, he was never a hero in the first place. My entire issue with this is that in order for women to stand up, men need to be torn down, that a power vacuum needs to be created in order for a woman to step up. So fans of Luke Skywalker had their hero wrenched away from them, his life story unfavorably rewritten, and then the fans are labeled as sexist and bigoted for hating it. Was there a better way to do this? To introduce Rey and build her up as the next generation of Jedi and still keep Luke true to his character? Yes, absolutely yes. Instead of making Luke's entire life a failure, what if Luke is working towards the next evolution of the Jedi? Having seen Kylo Ren fall to the dark side, he realizes that the Jedi need to evolve beyond the battle between good and evil, but he's stuck. And meeting Rey is what sparks the final evolution, that while he trains Rey, he once again experiences the existence of a young warrior, unfettered by the world and is just potential and hope, something he hasn't felt for a long time since he's been weighed down by experience and loss. This could have been the perfect meeting of pure potential and distilled wisdom, and the two could have moved the story forward into its next iteration, but instead, they burned it all down. You know, even though I didn't like The Last Jedi, I liked that Ryan Johnson was trying to drive home the point that greatness can exist even if you come from nothing, that it's not your lineage that gives you your potential. But hand in hand with this is his motto of let the past die, as he makes Kylo remind us, kill it if you have to. And that is exactly what Ryan Johnson does. The problem with this thinking is that a lot of who we are is actually created and made possible by the past. Our abilities, our wisdom is built on the foundations of centuries and generations of the people that have come before us. And maybe this is very obvious to say, but the world we know today would not exist if millions, billions of people didn't fight the wars that needed to be fought and laid down the foundations of the buildings that needed to go up and create this infrastructure where we can wake up every day and go to work or call our friends or start our businesses or just do whatever we want. My point is that we are right now and always will be benefiting from the work done by generations of people that came before us and our work will benefit the people that come after us so you might ask why do people want to burn down the past why do we need to kill it well i think it's fair to say that lately general criticism of every f thing has become the national pastime. From cancel culture to political correctness, many people are making it their profession to either be disgusted, offended, critical, or simply just done with the past. But burning everything down, bringing down statues, burning flags, destroying old heroes, is like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And it does not take into consideration all the good things that the past has created and made possible for us today. Now, you might reasonably ask, baggage claim, what the f*** does this have to do with Luke Skywalker. Well, to me, it feels like Ryan Johnson burned Luke down. He took his legacy and made it a lie. He did this so Rey could stand up on her own, not with help from the past, like Luke did being guided by Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi, but all alone, representing the dawn of a new age of Jedi, untouched by the sins of the past. And that's fine for Rey, but Luke Skywalker's story is important. Luke and his father's stories have a lot of parallels. Both of them grew up on a desert planet and hoped to be more than their humble lives could offer them. Both of them lost their family. Anakin, his mother, Luke, his uncle and aunt that raised him. Anakin struggled to accept the injustice and chose revenge while Luke looked beyond his grief and sought to get the means to fight for justice. When he finally stepped up to face his father and the emperor, he was armed with a weapon, with everything that Obi-Wan and Yoda had taught him, but most importantly, the knowledge of what had happened to his father, of what is at the end of the road if you choose anger and revenge. Luke's understanding of the past, of his father's struggles, helped him fight the dark side. But not only that, to transcend beyond his own struggles and inspire goodness in a man thought to be lost forever. This is why Luke is such an important hero, and so many people can relate to him and his story and see similarities in their own struggles with their families. And watch as Luke, despite everything, decides to face his father not with anger, but with forgiveness and a helping hand. 
I think the saddest part about what happened to Luke is Mark Hamill having to participate in his destruction. While Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford moved on to other projects after the original series, Mark has always stayed true to the Star Wars fandom, coming out to events and spending as much time with fans as possible. Mark understood that he represented something bigger, something much more important than even himself. He represented hope to fans everywhere. And that's because heroes speak to us more than psychology books ever could. When we're in difficult times, it's remembering what our favorite heroes did that inspires us to endure and survive and find our own path out of the darkness. I think Mark Hamill did as much as he could to preserve Luke's legacy and his story and his character and in the end, he still lost. And watching the behind the scenes, you can see him utterly broken by Ryan Johnson's decision to kill the past. There is a Yoda quote. You know which one I'm talking about. Luminous being so we, not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. And this is exactly what Luke proves, that we can rise beyond our limitations of our difficult circumstances, the limitations of our families and our past, and become the ultimate ideal. And this is why we all need Luke Skywalker. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and please share with someone who might also enjoy it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.